If you use uBlock Origin, then you may have seen a screen like this before. I'll be honest, I've seen it, but I haven't really understood it. I would just click the temporarily button and continue on my merry way, but this screen serves a very important purpose. While researching alternate tracking methods to cookies, I came across something called bounce tracking, otherwise known as navigation-based tracking. This method of tracking aims to break privacy improvements made by only allowing first-party storage, which is the domain loaded in your web browser, by pushing unique identifiers across different websites. To understand this type of tracking, we first need to talk about query strings. A query string is the part of a URL that assigns values to specified parameters. You'll typically see a query string in your browser as the string following the question mark in the URL. As an example, when you search for something on YouTube, this is what the URL looks like. The first part we have here is the domain name, youtube.com, followed by the actual page, which is slash results. And then as I mentioned earlier, after the question mark, we have the query string. The format for query string parameters is a key value pair. So in this example, we have the key, which is search query, followed by the value, which is first video on YouTube. Now this query string value is what's being used to display the results on the page. So we can see here, first video on YouTube matches what's in the search box, first video on YouTube. So if we go ahead and change the value in the query string, so we can now see that the search results were updated for my new search term, Numa Numa Dance. And we can also see the search box was updated using that query string value. So one more example, we can now see that we're on the watch page, which is why you see the video. If we take a look at the query string parameters being sent this time, we have a key of V, and then we have a value of a unique identifier for this video. Similar to the previous example, if we change the value in the query string, we now see a different video playing because the value changed and we now have a unique identifier for a different video. So these examples show just how you can manipulate the contents on a page using the query string, and a lot of websites work similar to this, depending on what values are sent in the query string, that's the data that's displayed on the page. So now that we understand query strings, this is what bounce tracking is using to circumvent browser privacy protections, specifically third-party cookie blocking. So now back on the uBlock Origin page, I got to this page by clicking the Green Man Gaming link on PCGamingWiki.com. Links will be down below if you want to follow along. So the first thing we see on this page is the URL that was prevented from loading. So based off of the text we clicked on the previous page, we would expect to be taken to greenmangaming.com, but that is not the case. The domain actually being loaded is dpbolvw.net, which I'll refer to from now on as dp.net, which is a click-based ad network trafficker. Following the domain, the page's loading is click a string of numbers, which is most likely a specific page ID related to either pcgamingwiki.com which is the original site we clicked the link on, or greenmangaming.com. Next, we see the question mark, which indicates the string following that is a query string. We see the key, which is URL, and the value is the intended final destination we wanted to originally end up at when we initially clicked the link. There's some other query string parameters following that, and while I can't say exactly what they are, I do have some guesses. Tap A is likely an ID associated with the link on PCGamingWiki.com, and Tap S is likely an ID associated with GreenManGaming.com. These IDs are useful for tracking companies and the websites you're visiting, because typically these IDs will be associated with a single action on a site. So if I sent the Tap S ID in my request, they would know that Josh clicked the Green Man Gaming link on PCGamingWiki.com on that specific page. They then use this data to see what's popular, what links are generating traffic, along with a bunch of other analytical data they're able to collect. Essentially, we're being bounced from PCGamingWiki.com to DP.net, and since the intended destination of GreenManGaming.com was included in the query string, DP.net knows to bounce us back to where we wanted to be. The reason this is such a sneaky tracking method is that since you technically requested DP.net, that counts as a first-party domain. Now, they don't need to place a cookie because they're just a click tracking company, but if they wanted to, they could, and it would be considered a first-party cookie. So when you do see this page in the future, what you can do is first see the domain that was detected, which we have the dp.net. We can see why it was detected, and that's because it's in the Peter Lowe's ad and tracking server list. You can then click the magnifying glass. You get a breakdown of what I described earlier. We have the ad tracking URL without parameters, we then have the URL that we wanted to visit, this Green Man Gaming, but we can see that it's including the tap A, and then we can see the URL that we wanted to visit without parameters, and this is the one that you want to click. When you click on this, you're going to be bypassing any tracking, such as the query string with the tap A. We're not going to be loading the dp.net domain, 
So when you click on this, you're taken directly to the site you wanted to visit initially, and you're completely avoiding that tracking domain that was trying to load. Browsers such as Brave and Firefox have also implemented some protection against this as well, but I'll be covering that in a future video.